Hi, I'm Fraser Douglas, the avid tent camper. Today is a beautiful late November day, but the temperature today, but the high temperature today, so far has been 32 degrees. Ava and I decided to take a trip up to Montgomery Bell State Park in central Tennessee and I want to tell you about this park and its campground. To guide my overview of this campground I'll be using the criteria that are presented in my website www.basictentcamping.com. A link to this website is presented in the description below. This park is located about 35 miles west of Nashville, Tennessee, between the two small towns of Dixon and White Bluff. The main entrance sits directly on U.S. Highway 70, and the park is about 10 miles north of Interstate 40 that runs between Nashville and Memphis. The park was initially established by the National Park Service in 1936, and its infrastructure was built by the Civilian Conservation Corps. It was deeded over to the state of Tennessee in 1942. The campground has 116 campsites and seems to be very popular. Even on the cold day of our visit, several RVs were parked there. Although there were no gates that locked overnight, park rangers were very visible in the park and alcoholic beverages are prohibited. An entrance station is located at the entrance of the campground to monitor campground activity and entrance of unregistered guests. The campground is oriented from south to north along the banks of Four Mile Creek. The red campsites are primarily for RVs. The blue sites have water and electricity and can be used by either RVs or tents, and the yellow sites are exclusively for tents. The roads through the campground are paved with asphalt, uh, although they have been heavily used, they still appear to be in good shape. Three bathhouses are located in the campground, one of which has laundry facilities. And a nice little self-serve library is located up near the entrance station. The buildings and grounds of the campground and of the park appear to be very well maintained. On the day of our visit, there was a lot of leaf litter on the ground, but photos of the campground taken during the summer show that most of that leaf litter is probably going to be removed for before next summer's camping season. When we walked inside one of the bathroom buildings, we found the bathroom, sink area, and the shower stall area to be exceptionally clean. Every campsite had either a gravel or asphalt parking area, a very nice picnic table that could be moved, and a fire ring with an adjustable height cooking grate. Unfortunately, the pedestal grills that I like so much were not available in the campground, but were commonly seen throughout the park in the different picnic areas. The size and levelness of the campsites varied considerably throughout the campground. In general, the water and electric sites along the creek seemed to be the best tent campsites, and site number 79 would be my top pick of the bunch. This is site 86, and it also is very nice. Across the campground on the other side, uh, the sites have a beautiful wooded view, but are very sloped. In fact, many of them are too sloped for our large six-person tent. This is a water and electric site number 66, and this is a tent only site number 54. This tent site 55 
is very large and is conveniently located to the bathroom, but it looks like it could hold water uh, after heavy rain. During our two-hour visit in the park, we had the opportunity to talk with two employees, a park ranger who was driving around the park, and we encountered him several times during our visit, and an employee that worked in the Nature Center. Both were extremely friendly and very helpful. There are lots of fun things to do inside the park and just outside of it, especially during the warm camping season. For example, ranger-led interpretive programs and children's activities are frequently offered, especially during the weekends. A large activity field, playground, and volleyball court, court are located just beside the campground. Three small lakes inside the park offer opportunities for boating and fishing. On Acorn Lake, you'll find a large picnic area, a boat rental area, a swimming area, a snack bar and covered pavilion area, and a very nice restaurant. Around Lake Woodhaven, you'll find picnic area, a historic cabin, the birthplace of the Cumberland Presbyterian Church, Group Camp 1, Group Camp 2, and his, uh, cabins that were built by the CCC many years ago, and a boat dock. Just inside the main entrance on Highway 70, you'll find the Welcome Center and Nature Center. That includes a monument to the CCC, lots of things for children to touch and feel, and several interesting exhibits. I was especially interested to see this corn snake that looked like a copperhead and a great horned owl in the in a cage out back. Throughout the park you'll find several hiking and biking trails. This short trail was located just behind the nature center. Golf enthusiasts will enjoy hitting a few balls in the park's golf course. Just outside of the park, campers will find a variety of museums, historic buildings, unique shops, festivals, and restaurants. And since the park is located just 35 miles away from downtown Nashville, you can very easily ride in and enjoy a day of country music and return to your campsite in the evening. Several stores are located nearby so that campers can find all the supplies they need. For example, a Dollar General store is located just a couple of miles to the east in White Bluff, and a much wider range of shops and stores, including a Walmart, can be found about 10 miles to the west in Dixon. Firewood and ice can be purchased right in the entrance station of the campground. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed this video, and I hope that you'll consider visiting this park if you're ever in the Nashville, Tennessee, Central Tennessee area. For more suggestions about great tent camping destinations in the eastern United States, please visit my website, www.basictentcamping.com. Remember, take more trips, travel further, visit more attractions, and save money. Go tent camping!